in time. Because without glasses on I can't see things very great from a distance. I really love paintings of things that are really large so that I can still see the details even without my glasses on, which is how I prefer to just hang around the house. Well I've already done one of the canvases, so that's going to be four canvases, one above each window. I had Greg custom make these canvases to fit in the specific space for me. The second one that's mostly red, I kind of was just using that as a place to get rid of my extra red paint. And I thought I was going to make the base of that painting red because I thought that red looked good in this space. Partly because I had painted a lamp red and I had bought another red lamp and we have a lot of red toned woods and we have some red accents in the kitchen, all of which look great. But that block of red up there on the canvas made me realize that while red accents look great in this room, a lot of red, not so much. So I'm going to be changing that canvas pretty significantly, but for now I'm actually starting a new canvas, which I'm very excited about. So I know what general idea I want this leaf to have, but I'm gonna to need to do a little bit of research to get it exactly right. That's what's up next. that paints have fumes. It's not like super glue or something. Still kind of can feel it, so opening the window. Hopefully my gorgeous blooms don't mind the draft. Oh my gosh, aren't these so beautiful? So if you're actually an artist or specifically a painter and you're watching me, you might be thinking I have no idea what I'm doing. That's kind of true. I have very little experience with acrylic paint specifically, but it's interesting to note that I am definitely a professional artist. I have tons of experience with vector art, with digital painting. I now actually have a fair bit of experience with watercolor painting and all kinds of other crafts. And it's interesting how the more crafts you do, the more you just start to learn those basic art principles. And it's also interesting how different mediums make those principles apply differently. Yeah, I'm not that experienced at getting the color I want by manually mixing paints. I'm used to that digital painting cheater method of there's the color I want, let's press control, and then I've got my little dropper and we click on it and boom, 
I've got that color on my paintbrush. That's one of the biggest advantages to digital painting. The hand control though, it's pretty much just as difficult. And if you're actually moving from brush to computer, it's just as hard as moving from computer to brush. They're just two completely different tools. Anyways, let's get back to painting. freshman year in art class, I was introduced to this particular sort of palette. It's like a dollar, I think. The only one I've ever had, and I've had it since high school, my freshman year. I use this for both watercolors and acrylic, and it's great. I sometimes create like an entire rainbow across this spectrum here, which is really nice. And then you've got a big section for doing the blocking in like I was just doing. These are actually some of my first paintbrushes. The big one still seems to be in pretty good shape, but this one's not softening up, and I'm thinking it might be time to actually get rid of it. Like. Now that I've had it for 15 years, you can get a lot of life out of a brush if you take good care of it. Make sure you wash it in cold water, not hot water, which can loosen the glue and make it lose its stuff. And make sure you wash it every time and don't leave it sitting in a cup of any water. I didn't follow those steps in the beginning, and so this brush is a little so-so. And now begins day three of painting. I learned that actually this brush, which I was thinking was total trash, is actually really useful for doing this too, which is not something I want to do to my good brushes because I don't want to mess them up. Guess I'm keeping it after all.
first started this painting, I thought it was going to be relatively easy because I was looking at the leaf and I was thinking that it was a pretty simple pattern. However, as I've been going along, I've realized that this pattern is not at all simple and not at all easy. Like everything I've learned to do in art, it's an individual pattern, a specific sort of fractal, just like learning to draw a particular type of tree or learning to draw ocean waves. There's a particular pattern to it, and if you don't get it right, it doesn't look the same. So I've been having things that look more like clouds or more like rocks, and I'm like, no, I want that bubbled, sort of textured, almost fuzzy looking surface. It's very similar to La Sonata of Kale, so I'm pretty sure that I'll be better at painting kale after this project. So it's been taking me a lot longer than I expected. I've been working on it an hour to three hours a day for like the last completely lost track of how many days I've been painting. I guess I'll be able to look it up at the end and let you know. to the drawing board with references because my spiral leaf canvas that just features a giant spiral begonia is just about done and now I want to try to get it to coordinate with the other canvases that is going to be mounted above these windows because I want the four to look like a set together. You might wonder how I could be an environmentalist and also paint at all, considering how many resources it consumes to make art in general. Particularly, I just wanted to draw attention to the fact that all toilet paper you ever see me use ever, all of the other paper we use, including paper towels, is either made from bamboo or made from recycled materials because just for toilet paper alone, 27,000 trees, often virgin trees, like from forests that haven't even been cut before, that's tragic. Go to your you know, regular grocery store, you can probably find at least toilet paper made from recycled, which I think is what this specific roll was because I bought it while traveling. Want to just go online, you can order a huge box uh, from Who Gives a Crap of wonderfully soft, I love their toilet paper because bamboo is way, way, way more renewable. It grows super, super fast. So many, so many benefits to leave old growth forests there. The diversity of species, the production of oxygen, so much stuff that has to do with the stability of our ecology, the health of our birds, our butterflies, our bees, our animals. 
and also our climate stability all goes back to having these old growth forests. Your, your butt wiping is really not worth it. Those trees are worth more, I'm sorry. In light of how vital trees are to every creature on this planet, humans included, I've committed to planting a tree for every product I sell and every product I've ever sold retroactively. So whenever you buy a book or board game from me, you're not only supporting my work as an author and artist, you're also planting a tree. Let's get back to art. you know have this thing where they divide and then they divide again and then they divide again and it looks like very artistic that's because we got our artistic sense from the fractals in nature until i did this leaf i never really thought about how many different fractals were interacting in one plant and in this case in one leaf veins of the leaf are a particular type of fractal pattern but then there's also the knobbly bubbly texture of the leaf which is a different sort of fractal pattern and then there's the coloration differences I was so distracted by the fine detail of the fact that it was kind of speckled, but when I just did it in speckled, it didn't look right because there was this overarching pattern that was like slightly spiky. I'm in awe of nature. It produces such amazing, beautiful things.
today is Greg's birthday, so I just wrapped him a few presents while he's still in bed, I believe, and uh, hopefully he likes them. And because I don't use tape most of the time, I'll use like ribbons just to hold the paper on. It makes it a lot easier to save the paper. teacher also had this poster hanging on her wall that I loved that said paints aren't messy people are if the paints not going where you intended to it just means you need more practice
Today we had our first epic snow of the year, a full month later than usual. I put on my snow pants and went outside at dawn to capture shots with my Sony ZV-1, and then went back to capture an Instagram reel with my Xperia smartphone. And this is my first time owning a smartphone, a full decade later than virtually any other American. I got it for you, my viewers. If you would like off-the-cuff, behind-the-scenes footage, follow me on Instagram, phoenix underscore raiderly. I was sadly locked out of my original IG account, hence why I put my middle name first in the username. I still plan to make further improvements on the three canvases, and there will be a fourth, which I have not yet begun, but that will wait for next autumn. For now, I'm researching and writing on the topics of autism, dyslexia, ADHD, and more, way more, in my upcoming book, Neurodivergence. And of course, I'm making other art. My most recent art project has taken me longer than any of the three canvases. Uh, what art is that, you ask? You just watched it. Thank you so much to my patient patrons. You guys are so awesome. be like spiral leaves, underwater seaweed, and steampunk gears together. And the color scheme is green, gold, and red, which sounds suspiciously Christmassy, but that's what we're doing. 